Good morning, everybody, and welcome on this Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent. We'd like to begin with a song. We'd invite you to sing with us. Uh, the song is, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy, and it's number 490. 490. There's a wideness in God's mercy, like the wideness of the sea. There's a kindness in his justice, which is more than liberty. There is plentiful redemption in the blood that has been shed. There is joy for all the members in the sorrows of the for the love of God is broader than the measures of our mind. And the heart of the eternal is most wonderfully kind. If our love were but more simple, we should take him at his word. And our lives would be thanksgiving for the goodness of our In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting, this campaign of Christian service, so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with the weapons of self-restraint. And we ask it through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And so let us be seated as we listen to the word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts, not your garments, and return to the Lord your God. For gracious and merciful is he, slow to anger, rich in kindness and relenting in punishment. Perhaps he will again relent and leave behind him a blessing, offerings and libations for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, proclaim a fast, call an assembly, gather the people, notify the congregation, assemble the elders, Gather the children and the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom quit his room and the bride her chamber. Between the porch and the altar, let the priests and ministers of the Lord weep and say, Spare, O Lord, your people, and make not your heritage a reproach with the nations ruling over them. Why should they say among the peoples, 
where is their God? Then the Lord was stirred to concern for his land and took pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be, Be merciful, merciful, O Lord, Lord for, we for we have, have sinned. sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin, cleanse me. Be, Be merciful, merciful, O Lord, Lord for, we for we have sinned. sinned. For I acknowledge my offense. And my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Be I'm merciful, O oh Lord, Lord, for we, we have, have sinned. sinned. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Be merciful, merciful O Lord, Lord, for we have sinned. sinned. Give me back the joy of your salvation and a willing spirit sustain in me. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Be merciful, merciful O Lord, Lord, for we, we have, have sinned. sinned. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are ambassadors for Christ. As if God were appealing through us, we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who did not know sin so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Working together then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in an acceptable time, I heard you. And on the day of salvation, I helped you. Behold, now is a very acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you, as hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing, so that your almsgiving may be secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. 
when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on street corners so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you may not appear to be fasting, except to your Father who is hidden. And your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. you've ever been blessed to um, to be at a baptism either of a little baby or or an adult everything is clean and wonderful bright uh, the baby's gown the dress you know sometimes it's passed on already for generations the parents the godparents are in their best suits and even the little cousins and munchkins running all around the place are having a great time smiles lots of joy and the celebration of a baptism even smells good. It even smells good. Because the holy blessed oils that are used, the chrism, they're full of fragrance. And when the priest and the parents and godparents first make the sign of the cross, very gently, beautifully on the baby or baby's forehead. Then later on, there's this oil of catechumens after a prayer to anoint the breast. And then after the water and the baptism, this whole making of the sign of the cross with chrism, really perfumed oil on the top of the head. And if you're close enough, you smell all this wonderful, wonderful thing. The sacrament of baptism the gift of God's life in us looks and smells wonderful. But if you go around yesterday when Father Don made these ashes in our big fireplace, it didn't smell so good. The palms are burnt. They get changed from being green and yellow to burnt black. They fall apart. They stink. The smoke filters up in our house. So by the time it gets to the third floor, you think you're choking. And you know there's ashes around. And it's not a bad thing, perhaps, that we have that sort of dark, smelly stuff because we are no longer the innocent babies at the baptism. Or if we were baptized as an adult, we're no longer the absolute purely newborn that an adult Christian is. The cross of burnt ashes on our heads this morning is not the gentle, fragrant cross of the Holy Chrism at baptism. The cross of ashes today is rougher and grittier and dirtier than the cross of the baptismal oils. And that's because that's how we've become over the years and over this past year. Rougher grittier, perhaps dirtier. 
And the ritual of Ash Wednesday speaks of things, of realities, that we usually try to just sort of gloss over, to hide. And the ritual of the ashes lets us put into, into relief, into, into focus, what we find so difficult to put into words sometimes, that there are tears in the heart of things. There are tears in the heart of things. The poet Virgil way back said that. Seamus Heaney also uses it. There are tears in the hearts of things. Within and around us, grief, tragedy, despair, deaths are part of the dust and the ashes of human life. And these ashes today, they come from our palms. They come from the hosannas from Palm Sunday last year. But, but we know how many times we have been unfaithful to the king whom we hailed last year. The tears of things. The tears at the heart of things. And over the years, many things that were once alive in us have, have perhaps died, turned to ash. Loved ones who have passed, illness has struck, friendships maybe have been broken, illusions about ourselves and others have been destroyed. And it is out of such ashes, out of such tears, that we hope, that we hope that Christ will raise us up to new life with him at Easter. We hope that. And in this season of Lent, the church calls us, we heard in the gospel, to prayer, to fasting, to almsgiving. So that just as it is with the ashes of a, of a brush fire, of wildfires in the fields, in the wood, just as it is with those ashes, sometimes they can bring forth new and more abundant life than ever before. In Sicily, Mount Etna, famous volcano, that still fires and erupts from time to time. But if you go near it, the sides and the hillsides have the most beautiful fertile fields from the ash that has come down and then new life come through. So may these, these gritty, these burnt, even smelly ashes, this cross of ashes, may it move us to reclaim and to restore the fragrance, the beauty, of the crosses of our baptism. And as we journey with Christ and with one another toward Holy Week and Easter, may we truly become the very righteousness of God, the very holiness of God. So dear sisters and brothers, let us humbly ask God our Father that he be pleased to bless with the abundance of his grace these ashes which we will put on our heads in penitence. O oh God, who desire not the death of sinners, but their conversion. Mercifully hear our prayers, and in your kindness, be pleased to bless these ashes, which we intend to receive upon our heads, 
But we who acknowledge we are but ashes and shall return to dust may through the steadfast observance of Lent gain pardon for sins and newness of life after the likeness of your risen Son, he who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. As we do for Holy Communion, we'll come to you and just in, we repent and believe in the gospel.
just for a moment, let us bring to mind all of the members of our families of the community here who would like to have been here this morning, but could not, but who will be part of our Lenten journey. Let's bring them to God's love too. And let us pray. We pray for the church that during this Lenten season, we recommit ourselves to upholding and strengthening the baptismal commitment of every person. We pray to the Lord, Lord that enemies may be reconciled to God and to one another, recognizing the Lenten spring as God's acceptable time, as the day of salvation. We pray to the Lord, Lord that the sufferings of the distressed and the afflicted may rend our hardened hearts, renewing our resolve to be ambassadors of Christ's compassion. We pray to the Lord, Lord for peace, especially in the Ukraine and Russia, and for all those whose lives and futures are placed in the balance, and for those reaching out to help refugees and victims. We pray to the Lord. Lord for, for the elect, those to be baptized this Easter all over the world, that they may accept the grace of God in this season Experiencing Lent as a fruitful time of enlightenment and renewal. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who are ill, for you yourself if you're not well, for those who care for the sick each day. We pray for Gil Justo, for Donald Rootsy, for Dave Kelly, Suzanne, Heather, and all those around the world suffering from the pandemic. That God's healing and strength pour down upon them. We pray to the Lord. Lord and let us pray for our dearly departed. We pray in a special way for Jules LeMay, who died yesterday morning, Suzanne's father. That our Father who sees in secret may reward the faithful departed, granting them a full share in Christ's paschal victory. We pray to the Lord. Lord and our Mass this morning is offered for Terence Keegan, for his blessings and good health in his life. And then we pray in silence for the people, the things closest to you. Pray to the Lord. Lord At this acceptable time, O oh God, so rich in mercy, we gather in solemn assembly to receive the announcement of the Lenten spring and the ashes of mortality and repentance. Lead the elect exulting to the waters of salvation. Guide the penitent rejoicing to the healing river, and carry us all to the streams of renewal. We ask it through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. 
Blessed be God. So, sisters and brothers, let us pray that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we entreat you, Lord, that through works of penance and charity, we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleansed from our sins may become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your Son who lives, who reigns forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, should humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so, we glorify you with countless angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For at the time when he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Leonard, our Bishop, and all those who minister to your people. Remember also our brothers, our sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Now let us pray with great confidence to the Father the words the Lord Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace, everyone. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of the Lord keep us all together unto everlasting life.
the sacrament we have received. Sustain us, O Lord, that our Lenten journey may be pleasing to you and be for us a healing remedy. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Then let us rise and bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Pour out a spirit of sorrow, O God, on those who bow before your majesty. And by your mercy, may they merit the rewards you promise to those who do penance. We pray it through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And our celebration is ended. Let us go in peace. Thank Thanks you. be to God. Take care. A good Lent. God bless us all. Peace. Thank you, Father.